the ultimate truth words are never going to be enough words are made of alphabets alphabets are made of seeds they are made of seed sounds and the seed sounds are very very powerful hmm? like when we say when we chant we don't say we just chant i it is a certain thing makes you feel very still very calm very open so what happens when you are still from the inside what happens when your eyes are very much open but you are completely still inside not much happening sometimes nothing is happening at all little bit is bound to happen but a lot of things that were happening are not happening anymore a lot of things that happened in your life every day every hour suddenly you enter a phase when nothing like that is happening anymore as if you have entered a new phase of your life as if you have opened a new chapter of your book which you were studying and this time right on top it is called life we are talking about that we are talking about those seed sounds that are tremendously powerful when they resonate within you if you chant aim and you keep your eyes closed I experience what is happening as a result of this chant. There is a certain kriya that will begin 
a certain pattern that this chant will lead to. Let's say if you drop a pebble into a pond, what will happen? Or into a pool of water, what will you see? You will see ripples. If you pick up a bigger stone and throw it, you will see that the ripples will last for a different duration of time and it will have a different impact. So it depends how you are chanting, which seed sound you are chanting, how many times did you chant and what was the process that you followed when you were chanting this mantra. You cannot just take out a mantra from an online source or from Google or from any book and start chanting it without any instruction, without any elaborate description as to what it is, what it does, how will this chanting become fruitful? Is this chanting needed for you? If it is needed, how you will can you make it fruitful for you? Hmm? Let's say if we pick up a very common mantra. It is a very common mantra. Everyone knows Om Namah Shivaya. It is a common mantra. Is it an ordinary mantra? No. It is not an ordinary mantra. It is a Maha Mantra. It is not an ordinary mantra. It depends how you are chanting it. It depends what is the process that you are following. You can chant it without creating sound orally. You can chant it inside also. In your mind, you keep chanting Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. It will happen in a certain way. But how are you chanting it inside? There needs to be a process. And that process has to be described elaborately. So that process is called initiation or diksha. How Om Namah Shivaya needs to be chanted in your mind. And not just chanting it, but you have to do some more things in your daily lifestyle. Maybe you will have to, when you are doing it, you need to have a certain ambience. You need to have a certain setup, even though it could take very small size. But that setup should be there. So those are called niyamas or rules or instructions, whatever you want to call they have to be followed. If they are followed to the T, and if you keep doing it without any expectation of any kind of fruit, you are just doing it because initially you want to do it. If you do it initially just because you want to do it, and if you do it without any expectation. The moment you have expectation, thoughts will come in, desires will come in. That will make it very cheap. Hmm? That will affect your, what we call it, your sadhana. That will affect your aim or aiming. You will not be aim to, to hit at the blind spot. Okay. Or at the center of the point, you will not be able to hit it. The focus won't be there because the focus is somewhere else. Instead of focusing on the mantra and the science that it is leading to upon your human anatomy, if you focus on other things, 
material expectations, material desires, etc. That if I just sit down and chant Om Namah Shivaya in my mind or through Japa orally 108 times, this is going to work. Well, whether it works or not, that is not the ideal way to approach it. It is not the ideal way to approach it. The ideal way to approach it is very simple. And yet, as per the rules, as per the instructions, hmm? as per the science, hmm? not, uh, you know, not something else. Not on the basis of some silly desires. Because it is a very powerful mantra. Hmm? Om Namah Shivaya. Even Omkar, lots of mantras. They can bring changes in your human anatomy, they can even bring changes in your, in the way you think, the way you talk, what you talk, and a lot of things. The way You live your life, the way you think, the way you feel, the way you meditate, it will take you ahead on that path also. You will become a lot more focused. You will feel a lot more alive <laughs> than drained out. Hmm? So either you can feel drained out or you can through karma or you can experience being more alive. You can even taste nectar, you can even experience bliss. It depends. So initially you start with a desire. The ideal way is this. You start with a desire. I want to do this. Okay, let's say. Let's say you want to learn. You are a seeker. Just a seeker. Nothing less, nothing more. Just a seeker. Someone who wants to know. Know what? Know the truth. Because we don't know. It's as simple as that. You have to acknowledge your status and then you have to go looking for the Guru who can, for that Guru who knows as well, who knows and who can help you. Not someone who is always looking into your wallet, otherwise if that is happening, then that person already does not know, right? So it is like this, that uh, that person is already clouded with greed. Greed can lead to a lot of things. Hmm? Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Madha, Matsare. Greed will lead to attachment. Attachment can lead to jealousy. It can also lead to ego. And it can lead to anger, rage, fury. It can also lead to lust. They are all interconnected. Okay?
So if we have to rise above this, if we want to rise above all of this, if we want to become more pure, to become pure, not more pure, but pure, if we seek purity, if we seek the truth, then according to people, Om Namah Shivaya is a simple mantra. It's a very common mantra, everyone knows. But not according to science. Om Namah Shivaya is not an ordinary mantra. It is a Maha Mantra. Even Om in itself is a Maha Mantra. There are some more Maha Mantras. We are not going to reveal them right now. We are just sharing with you some Mantras which most of you have probably already heard. Now Om, Om Namah Shivaya. These things are written on almost many temples. At least Shiva temple you will always find Om Namah Shiva. Hmm? Isn't it? So, and on top of every temple you will find Om written. So these things are there. Okay. Now in Om Namah Shiva also Om is there in the beginning. Then there is Namaha. Then there is Shivaya. That's it. Isn't it? So, what is this? How is to be your approach? So, approach in the beginning is the desire, the seeking to become pure, to know, to purify yourself, to know the truth, right? To rise above the bondages. Huh? So, this is the goal. This is the seeking. This is a good seeking. Now, what will, suppose you had given this mantra, you had initiated in this mantra by the Guru, the true Guru, about whom it has been called Guru the Brahma, Guru the Vishnu, Guru the Deva Maheshwara, Guru the Sakshat Param Brahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha. So, Guru Tattva is one of the Tattvas. This is very subtle tattva. This is way beyond. This has got nothing to do with five elements. Or pancha tattva. Or pancha mahabhuta. Which we already know of. This is a different tattva. It is called guru tattva. So this tattva is also there. So, it is possible. Now, but there will be initiation. There will be instructions which you will have to follow to the T. If you follow them to the T and do the practice and do all the necessary things that you've been asked to do, then what will happen? Then what will happen is that You can even experience, some people can experience a lot of calmness. You can experience feeling more alive than normal. Normally you feel drained out sometimes, sometimes you are excited, that's fine. Being fully alive is a different thing, being calm is a different thing. Most of us, most of us have not experienced that state. Most human beings have not experienced that state. But you can experience that state through this. You can even experience Ananda through this state. In this state. Right? Through the process. So it has got an impact 
the way you chant the mantra, the process that you follow, the connectivity in case you are able to establish, the help from the Guru, the following of the instructions, the changes here and there that you bring in your lifestyle, they make the difference. And the more you practice, the better you get at it. You learn a lot. can chant in various ways, you know, at various layers or levels like that. Initially, you have to first learn how to just do that, nothing else. At that given moment, you are just chanting, that is all. And you are totally immersed in that mantra. As long as you don't dive into the ocean, how will you enjoy the deep diving, you know, like they do, deep diving, scuba diving, whatever it is. So as long as you won't dive deep and roam around in the ocean or in a river or any place or in a sea, how are you going to enjoy it? So you have to totally immerse yourself. This is, this is 
this is a lot more than any kind of diving any kind of material thing this is a thing that will conquer the source of all material desires which is the mind you that is the meaning of a mantra so you immerse yourself into this mantra only nothing else this mantra has the power it has got the power to suck you in so some people will say i don't feel anything i i can't it is so see this is a, this is a total the thing is the whole process is the process is of immersion the process is of keeping your bag and baggage aside and at that point of time you are not doing anything you are not thinking anything and your only focus is upon the mantra you're not you're not here with any expectation any fruit you're not talking to somebody inside don't do that never do that never talk to anybody inside it's a bad game to play it has got no place in truth <laughs> or yog or whatever it has got no place in dharma also so talking is not going to help hmm but doing will okay right yeah so we have to immerse ourselves we have to dive into the mantra we have to feel everything sometimes we will not feel anything also it will just happen in the flow oyom namah shivaya shivaya this way then everything is become very still very calm in the previous time you're doing it there was kriya you were flowing in it hmm? it was leading to a process one process of another happening inside you and there are more ways then to do it so the immersion is very important nothing else happening except the chanting but you're chanting not because out of some learning the chant of each thing whether it is om or whether it is namah or whether it is shivaya it must be aligned with the way it is okay and it must also be aligned with you so right now you are only there you are nowhere else you are you are only in the mantra you are nowhere else when you are doing it you are only in the mantra you are nowhere else. Oh, oh. 
ya um so you are aligned with what the mantra is the each chant each part of the mantra is aligned with what you are not making it flow whatever flow it has it takes it will take its due course you don't have to force anything upon it through your mind you don't have to decide how long should i chant na ma shi vai you don't have to decide you don't have to decide how you have to chant om or how you know you don't decide it will be different it can get different okay you can't decide you won't decide you should not decide the moment you start chanting like this om namah shivaya om namah shivaya om namah shivaya om namah shivaya it is like ratan ratantu uh, ratantu dota which means like a parrot which has a uh, you know uh, memorized everything by heart you know when you when we were all children we used to uh, do kantasta kantha kantasta means we have memorized it by heart read it and memorize it by heart so read it again and again and again and again that is called kanthagar kanthastha uh, memorizing by heart so it is called ratantu tota the para to keep saying me to me to like that or whatever you will say you will say alu alu it will say alu alu whatever you will say it will also say it is a great mimic okay that is what a ratantu tota is ratta ah so it is like that so you don't have to do that that is not the science that has been passed on to us passed on to the yogis by the sages and the seers the rishis and the munis that is not that that is not the science that they have that is not the science that has come from the daiva or the divine that is not that that is not the, the science that we have been given that is not the vidya that we have been given our vidya is not theoretical of, of course some theory is also there but it is practical totally practical whatever is there in theory has to be implemented in life and then there are some things that are not there even in theory so those things are completely practical they are shared only by the guru nobody else can share it with you and that is called initiation hmm or diksha and that is the beginning of the guru shishya parampara or the guru disciple tradition okay and you are you become the part of that tradition okay it is the himalayan tradition it is the tradition that was that the rishis and the munis began and of course the daiva are also involved in it so without their blessings nothing can happen so there is also a thing about ishta deva how to do so if this thing is your ishta deva then you have to chant om namah shivaya so something will happen okay so everything is there lot of things are there which i cannot explain in brief but a lot of things are there that can only be learned elaborately okay not everything can be passed over just like that okay 
so there is a way there is a process but it is a saying that if you are a true seeker it is not a saying it's an act, it's a fact if you are a true seeker you will find a true guru ha huh? what yeah so it is like that if you have any ayata of truth in your seeking if you are totally committed to your seeking no one can stop you no one is going to stop you so it depends what you make out of what these sharings they do not it does not matter whether you have 10 rupees in your pocket or 1 rupee in your pocket or 1 billion dollar in your pocket it is coming for it does not involve any cost but so some things are being shared but not everything can be shared you know because it takes a lot of elaboration and different students or different uh, students you know seekers they understand in a different language because they have everyone has their own questions okay so some things can be shared in mass some things cannot be done in mass diksha or initiation cannot be done in mass that is not possible cannot be done because different people have got everything different everyone is kind of a, like a huge cosmos in themselves and then there is the higher uh, higher entity also inside that mechanism inside that cosmos which which is called you i whatever you want to call it. that is also there and then there is something beyond that also which is inside that is also there Hmm? So everyone has their own thing. Everyone has their own thing. When I say thing, this thing has got many meanings. But I cannot elaborate, and I don't want to elaborate the multiple faces of this world. The word that I am mentioning as thing. That everyone has their own thing. It is where it has got multi is multi faced. or multi fast whatever you want because most of us what we think we are is not who we are okay <laughs> if you knew then you would not have been a seeker ha huh? if you knew even those who are not seekers even they don't know even those who are seekers even they don't know otherwise they wouldn't be in seeking the only difference between a seeker and a non seeker is a seeker at least seeks and if the seeker is totally committed to the seeking then the truth one day or the other will definitely come the process will definitely come then it's up to hard work discipline all that also hmm? there are obstacles also there are questions also there will come in the path and again you have to go to the teacher or the master or the guru and again you have to put the questions in front of that and they will answer your question that that is their that is their duty that is their job hmm so these things are there so basically when we are chanting a mantra it is very important not to be a ratantu tota 
not to be not to memorize something by heart and then chant it that way om namah shivaya om namah shivaya om namah shivaya om namah shivaya even that is a, that has will have a good if, impact no doubt about it because you are doing some satvik thing but the power exploring the powers if you really want to explore the power of the mantra dive deep into it and if you want to explore it even more go to the shelter of a true guru a realized being and that can only guide you to towards or on the path of the ultimate truth the eternal truth otherwise it's not possible and of course there will be processes signs instructions that will be involved in it and you will have to keep implementing them. so all these things are there and a lot more things are there that are from external sources like the outer world that we are we are living in a, let's say we are living for the grihasthas who are living in a society so you have got uh, maybe children or whatever family or neighbors or whatever so it's an it's an interconnected world it's a it's a collective human society so human beings are just like you know uh, you know like there there are if you go to a jungle there is a leopard territory bag ka ilaka means it's a leopard territory let's say and that is a snake territory that is the territory of that particular cobra anyone goes near will just get you know what happens next so one cobra is enough to make a small place its own territory okay so like that there are territories so the human beings also have their territory we are trying to make too much out of something very ordinary and that is because of the inflated human ego so you have to get out of the zone of that inflated ego okay just leave the human society which they call as the world the so called world in which they act as if they are the rulers they are the carers they are the guardians they are the ones here who are the saviors <laughs> human beings almost act as if they are gods they are not we are just another tribe species whatever you want to call it so but we have access to some a very powerful science which is there which has its roots which has gone on gone on for a long long time hmm long long time so when shri ram was here prabhu shri ram was here lord shri ram was here lord shri ram should not also be call, just called just the lord he is actually prabhu hmm you understand prabhu means lord means like uh, there have been a lot of lords you know in this world it's a uh, it's not the right word for a prabhu prabhu is a more beautiful word lord is more like you know like as if you are a um what he called land lord you must have heard about the land lord so they are the lord of this land <laughs> they are the lord of that particular land so they are called the land lords so earlier there used to be land lords in india and in every part of the world there is to be land lords even today there are lots of land lords are they really the lords of that land we don't we are not sure <laughs> their actions don't speak as if they are lords 
but we still call the Lord. So since the word Lord has been used in that fashion, landlord also means if you are a tenant, you are going to rent a place, you have to speak to the landlord. Okay. So Lord is being used even for everyone. It could be anyone. It could be used for anyone. So it's better to say Prabhu Shri Ram instead of saying Lord. Prabhu is a very beautiful word. It is a it is a word in Devanagari. So Prabhu is a very beautiful word. Why? Because Prabhu has got bhakti in it, devotion in it. Prabhu has got bhakti ras in it. Rasa in it. The rasa of devotion. Prabhu can make you feel blissful. Devotion can make you feel blissful. Hmm? You can dance in it. You can sing in it. You can write poems in it. You can just sit still in it also with your eyes closed. You can perform any kind of action being in that state. It is called a state of bhakti or devotion. It is a different kind of devotion. It is a spiritual devotion. So when we talk about the story of Prabhu Shri Ram, it's not a story, but it's a thing that happened in history. It is history. So Prabhu Shri Ram is uh, also used for the ultimate truth. Ram is also the name of the ultimate truth. Ram is also a mantra just chanting the word Ram Ram People say that chanting in the mind is more impactful than chanting over right? Of course, uh, there are two ways to look at this. If you are chanting like Ram, 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 the mind chanting will be more effective. But if you are chanting Ram the way it was just done prior to this, then <laughs> the vibration is very impactful okay so these things can change your life if you do it just for 15 minutes 30 minutes then it's not going to change your life in your whole life you do something just for 15 minutes 30 minutes it's not going to have much of an impact but if you do it the right way the way it should be done with alignment with what with just being immersed in just that in that moment. Nothing else. Nothing else must come. It's an obstacle. Otherwise it's an obstacle. Otherwise there's a bada. There's an obstacle. You have to get rid of it. And then we have to go to the guru and the guru will find a way to get you rid of it. So so normally what can happen is that you can get immersed in and how to get immersed in it, that in itself is a complete process that has to be explained. So, if we get immersed in it, to not think anything, to not bring anything in between, if we do not have any expectations, 
वी आर जस्ट डूइंग इट बिकॉज यू वॉन्ट द ट्रूथ इज इन एंड लेट्स ए ओम नम शिवाय इट्स अ ब्यूटिफुल मंत्र शिव इन इट सेल्फ इज सो पावरफुल शिव इट्स इट्स अ रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ द अल्टीमेट ट्रूथ Shiva is not associated with anything. Hmm? It is not associated with anything. When I say anything, means anything. It is not associated with anything. And right as we are speaking, we are actually in that period when. those who know it is very important time going on so shiva is tattva it's a very subtle tattva so these things are very important so shiva is shiva is the representation of the ultimate truth it does not represent anything anything visual anything material anything material it is not representative of it is straight away the representation of the ultimate truth ram is also a representation of that ultimate truth these are all representations of the ultimate truth and the ultimate truth is the way it is it is not the way you want it to be or some people may have thought it out to be it is not like that so of course there are two aspects one is the material world which we see which we can feel we can touch we can taste that is one aspect one is that aspect which is beyond all these things hmm they are not connected to the five senses but the five senses are very useful in experiencing them all the five senses can make you blissful if you have worked upon it worked not upon the senses but because the senses are just a medium if you have worked upon that truth if you have worked on the path of that leads to truth if you have been, if you have done what you have been asked to by the by your master or guru hmm so you have to focus on the mantra you have to immerse in the mantra do not visualize anything do not try to see anything just have to focus on the mantra it's a chant that's all there it is hmm? this is a fact and when you do it that way the result of the chanting is tremendous it's tremendous the result of the chanting is tremendous this is a fact Hmm? What? So when we are chanting Om Namah Shivaya, how are we going to chant it? We are not going to visualize anything. We are not going to think anything. Visualization is equal to thinking. Do not think. <laughs> This is a process. Mantra Vidya is a process to conquer thoughts, not to bring more thoughts. Hmm? So you just do it this way. This is one way. There is another way also, in in which you have to visualize a particular, um, let's say, a particular name. Okay, 
or you have to visualize a particular mantra or you have to visualize a particular form form okay but that is a different path that is the path when you can't follow this path then you take that path that path is also there i'm not saying that path is wrong but no mistakes must be performed in that path also you must know what to visualize what to focus upon and what not to okay there are only a few things but if you work this way and if you are in the shelter of the guru if you are in the shelter of the guru trust me you will be absolutely fine if you just if you can just if you are ready to keep trying to keep trying see initially mistakes will happen some people will not make any mistake they will just take to it like a fish takes to water but some people can struggle in the beginning so for those who are struggling keep trying don't give up first day did not work or first time it did not work no problem try it again second time it did not work no problem try it again keep trying keep trying keep trying keep trying until you are able to make it work <laughs> so it will work right trust me it will work if this won't work another path is there okay so last time we spoke about shri hari so that path is also there and this time we are talking about something else this path is also there hmm. both are equally beautiful we are not making any comparisons here because it's of the same ultimate truth but we can't go to third fourth fifth sixth seventh tenth hundred today there are like people are focusing upon anything people are focusing probably people are creating things upon which they can focus for that should not be done don't do that don't do that okay have a guru have a true realized being as a guru for for your sake for the sake of truth for the sake of yourself right yeah because you want to live life 100% isn't it so coming back to the mantra so when we are chanting the mantra om namah shivaya we have to when we are chanting we have to immerse in the chant nothing else no, nothing else should come as a as an obstacle and we should not chant as a parrot that is memorized or that is mimicking we don't need to mimic somebody we need, need to memorize something we just you already know the mantra it's there of your head this is om namah shivaya so every every chant every sound everything coming out of your mouth you have to experience it you have to experience it if you do not experience it if you do not experience the sound of a certain kind of wind or another kind of it 
If you do not experience different things that are there in the mantra, that are there in, in, inside you. Huh? So if you do that, if you focus on that, and if you do the chanting in that way, focus on every little dot. Hmm? And you, that is immersion. That is what is immersion. And you're flowing it. The flow, as I said, it can also be completely a straight line. It can also be a flowing line. It is like that. So you could experience being a pond. You could also experience being a river. Pond is stagnant. River is dynamic. Both things you can experience. You can experience complete calmness. Or you can experience tremendous vibration, tremendous energy both are aspects of life both have to be experienced so do both of them so mantras have layers different kinds of layers varieties there is a variety okay so we will explain more on this particular subject in the next part okay in our next discussion we will in our next sharing we will be doing this we'll try to throw more light throw more throw more light yes that is the right word And elaborate more okay so right now you can chant this thing Om Namah Shivaya because we are in a beautiful time chanting okay. when you're chanting Please sit in an asana. Sit straight. Keep your back straight. Neck straight. Head straight still. Don't lift it. Don't bow it down. Keep it still. And chant. Get immersed in the chant. Don't be in a hurry to finish one chant. Don't try to count your chants. Do nothing like that. This is deep chanting. Go for deep chanting. Don't go for upper layers of chanting that are hardly making an impact. Don't throw a an extremely small pebble which is called Kankara. Don't throw them into the river. Throw some bigger pebbles. With time, when the right time comes, we'll also ask you to throw bigger stones. <laughs> it's not like you have to go to a river and throw these things. This is like I'm trying to tell you how you have to do the mantra chanting. Hmm? This is also the road to bliss. Okay? This is also the road to what? It is the road to bliss. It's also the road to feeling life. Feeling more energetic, more vibrant. I can't tell you how much more energetic or vibrant you will feel than what you are already right now. I can't really tell you. You you need to look. You need to experience that through experience only. And this is a key to that experience. 
and I will elaborate more, throw more light upon how you can experience it sure. through this particular tool or mantra or maha mantra, whatever you want to call it. So we will conclude with uh, mantra devoted to the Guru, which is like this. This particular sharing we will conclude with the, with the two mantras, and then we will throw more light in the next sharing. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu. Guru the Devo Maheshwara Guru the Sakshat Parabrahma Tasamai Shri Guru Venam Om Trayambak Babaji Guru the Murti Devaya Nama Om Trayambak Babaji Guru Ramorti Devaya Nama Om Dryambaka Babaji Guru Ramorti Devaya Nama Now please listen carefully. Om Trayambaka Baba Ji Guru Ramurti Devaya Namaha Om Namah Shivaya 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 In the next sharing we will also focus on or share on chanting and inside without chanting orally Thank you so much Om